Congratulations on the purchase of your new Green Machines Model 636HS Sweeper. Not only will your machine's highly efficient cleaning systems perform well the day you receive it, but for a long time to come. This operator training video will be presented in sections. Safety, Controls and Instrumentation, MDM Display Information, Machine Operations, The Dust Control System, Pre-Operational Checks, Sweeping with Your Machine, Emptying and Cleaning the Machine, Changing and Adjusting the Brushes, and Options. It is the operator's responsibility to read and understand the operator manual and to operate the machine safely. The safety labels that appear on the machine indicate important information you need to be aware of when operating the machine. Controls and Instrumentation All machine functions are controlled from within the cab. The steering wheel controls the direction of the machine. The lever to the left of the steering wheel has several functions. It controls the windshield wipers, the left and right turn signals, the horn, and the headlight low and high beams. On the cab floor are two foot controls, the brake pedal and the accelerator pedal. The operator seat is fully adjustable for operator comfort. To the right of the steering wheel there is a control panel with three gauges. The top gauge is the fuel level indicator. The second gauge indicates the engine RPM. The third gauge indicates the engine coolant temperature. In very warm weather operation, it is not unusual to see the temperature on the indicator climb above 212 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees centigrade. There are also a number of indicator lights on the control panel. When lit, the blue indicator light on the top right of the panel indicates when the front headlights are on high beam. When lit, the amber light on the bottom right of the panel indicates the diesel engine glow plug heater is activated. There are four indicator lights on the left hand side of the panel. The top red light indicates when the parking brake is on. If the engine is running and forward drive is selected, in addition to this red indicator light, there will be an audible alarm and the visual warning displayed on the display screen in the upper right section of the operator's compartment. The green light indicates when either the left or right turn signals are activated. A lit amber light would indicate battery charging system malfunction and the bottom red light would warn of a low engine oil pressure. To the right, in front of the operator, is a control panel which controls other machine functions. These switches control the machine operating mode, the hopper position, the suction power, the speed of the brushes, the work lights, the windshield defroster, the side and headlights, the rear fog light, the cab two-speed heater fan, the air conditioning, the hazard warning flashers, the rotating beacon, and the audible warning. The remaining cab controls are mounted just above the windshield. The optional rearview camera provides a total rear view in color. This helps provide the operator a full 360 degree view around the machine. To the right of this is the radio and CD player. To the right of the radio is the switch for the optional pressure washer and the optional wander hose switch. On the right hand side is the machine's main display screen known as the MDM and brain of the machine. The MDM screen displays the operating conditions of the machine and warning messages as needed. Depending upon which screen has been selected, it also shows engine RPM, vacuum fan RPM, vehicle speed, and much more. The MDM display will also display fault messages which can help a qualified service person quickly diagnose technical issues. The normal operational screens displayed indicate the condition of the machine. In the screen shown, the indication is that the machine is in transit mode and the drive lever is in the neutral position. With the machine mode switch in the transit mode position and the drive lever moved to the forward position, 
The MDM display will display transit mode in the top left of the screen. By depressing the foot pedal, the machine will move forward and have the ability to propel up to the machine's maximum speed of 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers per hour. The machine speed is indicated on the left-hand side of the MDM screen. On the right-hand side of the MDM screen, the total distance traveled is displayed. If the machine function switch is changed to one of the two work modes, work 1 or work 2, the top left of the MDM display will indicate the function selected. As indicated on the MDM screen, a work function has been selected and the drive lever is in the neutral position. The display on the right of the screen indicates the time spent operating in this work mode. When the drive lever is set to the forward position, the screen displays the change, and when the foot pedal is depressed, the machine moves forward in the selected work mode. Also displayed is the engine speed. As indicated, the engine is running at 2200 RPM. You will also see in the very bottom left of the screen a black bar with the word SELECT. Pressing the F1 button below the word will allow you to change the engine speed to meet the working conditions. For safety, it is highly recommended that you stop the machine and place it in neutral before making this adjustment. Note the machine's display screen indicates the machine is now in the neutral work mode. When you press the F1 button, the MDM will display the Adjust Engine Speed screen. By pressing the Up button to the right of the screen, you can increase the engine speed for sweeping up an incline. By pressing OK, the engine speed selected is maintained. You can also decrease the engine speed if the surrounding conditions dictate or to reduce noise as needed. Remember that you should always reduce the speed when it is not needed. The machine also provides both audible and visual warning alarms as required. For safety, if the ignition switch has been turned on with the drive lever in the forward position, the machine's transmission is disabled until the lever is returned to the neutral position. At that time, the transmission is activated. If the parking brake is on when the direction lever is placed in forward or reverse, the MDM will display warning, park brake on, release park brake, and an alarm will sound. If the hopper is raised when the directional lever is moved from the neutral position, the message hopper raised is displayed. As a safety feature, when the hopper is raised, the machine speed is limited. The MDM screen display will inform you of the machine's condition, warnings, and alarm states. Therefore, it is very important that you are aware of and understand what is being displayed. The standard basic screens will indicate when the machine is in the work or transit mode and if the directional lever is in neutral, forward, or reverse position. This first screen displays neutral work when the machine is in the work one, or work to mode and the directional lever is in neutral. The text of 2200 RPM indicates the engine speed. The display in the right half of the screen indicates the total hours operating in work mode. By moving the directional lever to the forward position, the screen changes to indicate the engine speed and the suction fan speed. This information is always displayed when you are in a forward drive work mode. If the machine was in transit mode when you initiated a work mode and start propelling, the message warning track wheels in for full fan and brushes on will be displayed. The wheels will automatically track in and the sweeping systems will turn on once the tracking in process is completed. If the mode switch is placed in the transit mode, this screen will display neutral transit. When the drive lever is moved from the neutral position to either forward or reverse, transit mode is displayed. The information on the left of the screen is the machine speed, and on the right is the total time the machine has been in the transit mode. As you propel the machine at a speed greater than 5 kilometers per hour, or about 3 miles per hour, the front wheels will 
track out. Until the process is completed, the message caution, speed restriction, wheel track operating is displayed. Once the wheel tracking process is completed, this message will disappear and the speed restriction will end. These four screens indicate the normal operating modes of the machine. As a safety feature, if the drive lever is left in the forward drive position when the engine is being started, the transmission will be automatically disabled. The MDM will display the message, Warning, Transmission Disabled, Return to Neutral. Bringing the drive lever back to the neutral position will cancel the alarm and reset the system. There are three other safety screens to be aware of. One indicates when the wander hose has been activated. One indicates when the fan inspection door is open with the switch activated and the other indicates when the hopper is raised and propel speed is restricted. By monitoring the MDM display, you will always be aware of the machine operating conditions and displayed cautions or warnings. Under normal sweeping conditions, the suction fan speed should be around 2000 to 2300 RPM and can be adjusted with the knob on the control panel to the right of the windshield. When the fan speed is adjusted above 2400 RPM, the fan boost screen is activated and you will see the gray bar on the right of the screen counting down from 5 minutes. If the speed is not reduced to less than 2400 RPM within 5 minutes, the MDM will shut off the fan and an alarm will sound. To reset the MDM fan speed limiting system, the machine must be stopped and the forward neutral reverse lever moved to the neutral position. Afterwards, normal sweeping can be resumed. If the fan boost has been activated more than five times in one hour, this message is displayed. You can increase the engine speed and enter the engine speed boost range up to three times in one hour. Once engine boost is increased above 2600 RPM, you will see a similar gray bar on the right of the screen counting down from 10 minutes. If the engine speed is not reduced to below 2600 RPM within 10 minutes, an alarm will sound and the engine speed will automatically be reduced to 2600 RPM. To cancel the alarm and reset the MDM engine speed control, enter the engine speed menu and scroll the speed down to the normal sweeping RPM. If the machine is working very hard and both the fan and engine are in their boost zones, this screen is displayed. You can now see that the MDM screen is a valuable source of information to help you work safely and effectively. Finally, the switch to the right of the MDM controls the hopper drain valve when needed. Machine Operations When the machine is operating in the work mode, the front axle is in the retracted position as shown here and the top speed is restricted. When traveling in transit mode, the front axle is extended to increase stability. The maximum speed that can be reached in transit mode is 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers per hour. The safest way to transition from work mode to transit mode is to stop the machine and bring the drive lever to the neutral position. The brushes will move in and then both brushes and the nozzle will rise. Now select the transit mode using the transit work switch located at the top left of the switch column. Next, select forward on the drive lever and using the accelerator, drive forward. It is recommended to maintain a straight line of travel during the tracking process. You should also remember that for the tracking process to take place, the machine must be traveling at least 5 kilometers per hour or about 3 miles per hour. Once the tracking process has been completed, the warning message on the display screen will disappear and the transit mode screen is displayed. The dust control system. The dust control system is an essential part of the sweeping process, so it is important that you understand when it should be used and how the system works. When the dust control system is fully operating, jets spray water in front of each brush, a cloud maker supplies a mist to the vacuum nozzle area, and a water jet 
located inside the suction tube, sprays water into the vacuum path to reduce dust entering the hopper. The operator can vary the amount of water supplied to the jets for the brushes, but has no control over the water volume to the cloud maker or to the jet located in the suction tube. The water system switch has three positions, with the middle zero position being the off position. Note, the dust control systems will only operate when you are in work mode one. The drive lever is in the forward position. The water switch is either in position one or two. The front axle is fully tracked in. There is water in the tank and the flow control valve is opened. With the switch in the one position, the water pump is activated and water is supplied to the cloud maker, the spray jets above each brush, and the jet in the suction tube. The amount of water going to the brush jets is regulated by the operator using the valve located in the cab on the left hand side of the seat. If the valve is turned completely off, the flow to the brush spray jets will be off, but the flow to the cloud maker will continue. It is important to use sufficient water to control dust in a sweeping application, but also important to conserve water and to prevent turning the debris into mud. Turning the water system switch to position 2 will run the water pump and only supply water to the suction tube jet and the brush jets. Note, the cloud maker still rotates to allow self-cleaning and prevent dirt buildup on the device when it is not being used. Pre-operational checks. Before cleaning with your machine, there are a few pre-operational checks that need to be done to confirm your machine is ready to be used. To be able to carry out the operator checks correctly, it is first necessary to raise the hopper. Confirm that the parking brake is set and the drive lever is in the neutral position. Turn the ignition switch to the preheat glow plugs position and hold it in that position for 5 seconds. Next, turn the ignition switch further to start the engine and release it when it starts. Now ensure the machine is in the work mode condition by placing the transit work mode switch in the middle position. Press the top of the hopper raise switch and hold the switch in this position until the hopper has fully raised. Next, release the switch and turn off the engine. Note, whenever working around a raised hopper, always confirm that the hopper safety stay is properly engaged. With the hopper now raised and the safety stay solidly in place, check the engine cooling system overflow tank level. The cooling system liquid level can be seen through the plastic tank and should always be at the maximum level, but not overfilled. Note, you should also remember that the engine water cooling system is a pressurized system. If you need to fill the tank, open the filler cap very carefully to ensure that all the pressure is released before finally removing the filler cap. Next, check the windshield washer fluid level. Inspect the engine air filter clog indicator. This indicator has a clear band that can be seen just above the green band. This indicates that the device has not been triggered. If the indicator has been triggered, the clear band will disappear and a red band will be seen. If a red band is seen, the engine should not be run until the air filter has been serviced by a qualified technician. Check the engine oil level only after the engine has been shut down for a few minutes to allow all oil to drain back into the oil pan. Never check the oil level with the engine running. If the oil level is low, add enough engine oil as recommended in the operator's manual for your climate and operating conditions to bring the level to the full mark. Next, check the hydraulic fluid level in tank sight glass on the left hand side of the machine. The hydraulic fluid level should be at the top of or very near the top of the sight glass. You should also make sure that the oil is a distinctive brown amber color as seen here and that the oil is clear and bright. If the oil looks cloudy or milky you should report that service is required. If the hydraulic fluid level is low you should fill the tank to the correct level using the correct oil. Note: The hydraulic fluid is the same oil as used in the engine. The correct specification of oil to use can be found in the operator's manual. Make sure that the dust suppression water tank is full. The water level can be easily seen at the rear of the machine via the sight glass. 
confirm that the brushes are in good condition and that the brush angles are set correctly as indicated here. The fuel level should be checked by turning the ignition switch to the on position and observing the fuel level gauge mentioned earlier. Sweeping with your machine. When you arrive where you are going to sweep, select Work Mode 1 on the transit work switch and forward on the drive lever. Next you can set the speed of the brushes and the fan to match the sweeping conditions. Now you can set the water switch to the required setting for dust control. If required, you can extend your sweeping path by moving the brushes out using the brush position levers. This also allows you to sweep next to a curb without the tires rubbing on the curb to help prevent tire damage. The brushes extend past the normal straight line sweeping position so that you can get into hard to reach places and sweep around corners. Also, pulling both brushes close together will help you sweep a clean inside corner. There is a brush down pressure adjustment knob in the cab next to the water flow control valve. By adjusting the down pressure on the brushes, you can place one brush onto a step or curb to sweep debris into the suction path. There is a flap on the suction head that aids in lifting light litter from the surface. This flap makes a chopping sound which can be adjusted by changing the vacuum power. If you are sweeping in the rain or there is a lot of standing water around, activate the hopper drain switch above the transit work switch so water can escape from the hopper automatically. If you need to move to a different location a short distance away, select Work Mode 2. The brushes and suction head will raise, but the wheels will remain tracked in. When you arrive at the next location, simply return to Work Mode 1 and the sweeping systems will resume with the same settings you had before. If you have a long distance to travel, select the Transit Mode. The front axle will track out and allow higher speed travel to your next destination. Emptying and cleaning the machine. When your hopper is full, or when your cleaning is finished, the machine needs to be emptied and cleaned. Place the machine near a container or in an area where the debris will be dumped. Set the parking brake. Unlatch both of the hopper door latches. Place the transit work switch in either work mode 1 or work mode 2. Release the parking brake and back the machine up to the debris container or dump site. The hopper raise lower switch is next to the transit work mode switch. Press the top of the switch to raise the hopper. Note, the hopper will not rise until the vacuum fan has stopped. If the hopper does not rise when the switch is pressed, wait until the fan stops turning. Once the hopper is empty, press the bottom of the switch to lower the hopper. Pull away from the dump site Set the parking brake and secure the hopper door latches. Before you park the machine for the day, it needs to be cleaned. To complete the recommended cleaning procedure, it is important that the machine be in work mode 1 or 2 with the front axle tracked in. Place the transit work switch in the work mode 2 position and drive the machine into the wash bay. With the parking brake set, Unlatch the two hopper door latches and raise the hopper. When the hopper is fully raised, switch to work mode 1 and then place the drive lever in the forward position to lower the suction head and brushes. Leaving the drive lever in the forward drive position, switch the engine off. Next, move the drive lever to the neutral position. For safety, before working around a raised hopper, Set the parking brake, turn off the machine, and deploy the safety stay under the hopper. With the suction nozzle and brushes lowered, you will be able to wash any dirt off the surrounding areas. Moving to the area under the hopper, wash out the suction tube on the left side of the machine. Next, remove the pre-screen from the front of the radiator and clean it. Move to the rear of the machine and wash out the hopper. Next. Stow the safety stay, pull out the hopper screen keeper pins, restart the engine, lower the hopper about halfway, and turn off the engine. With the hopper in this position, you can wash the cyclonic filters thoroughly. Remove the water tank safety chain, lift the lever, and pull the latch on the rear water tank. 
Swinging the tank open provides access to the radiator and other components. Wash through the radiator, taking care to keep the pressure jet level at about 18 inches, or one half meter, from the core to avoid damaging the cooling fins. Make sure you get into the corners, as a lot of cooling is done around the edges of the radiator. Close the rear water tank and refasten the safety chain. Moving to the right hand side of the machine, open the fan inspection door with the key and wash out the fan. Use the supplied scraper to remove any buildup of dirt. It is very important that the suction fan is kept clean with no dirt allowed to build up, as this can cause the fan to vibrate. Now raise the hopper again, redeploy the safety stay, and install the radiator pre-screen. Raise the hopper screen and install the keeper pins. Finally, stow the safety stay and lower the hopper. Note, if needed, you can also remove the side covers during the machine cleaning process to gain better access. Changing and adjusting the brushes. It is important to have the brushes set correctly and to ensure that there is enough life remaining to complete your cleaning task. To change a brush, loosen the Allen screws and then turn the brushes to allow the Allen screws to drop through the holes. Loosen the Allen screws on the new brush and raise them through the holes in the mounting plate. Next, turn the brush in the opposite direction that the brush will be sweeping and tighten all of the Allen screws. Putting the machine in work one mode, placing the direction lever in the forward position and turning off the ignition once the brushes have lowered enables you to check that the head skids are secure and the angles of the brushes are correct. If the brush angle needs altering, you can loosen the nuts at the rear of the brush holder to reset the angle from side to side, as shown here. Loosening the bolts on the bottom lets you adjust the angle from the front to back. The brushes should be adjusted so that they touch the ground at about the 10 to 4 position on the right hand brush and 2 to 8 on the left hand brush, as shown here. Options. There are a number of options that can be fitted to the machine. In this section we will deal with the wander hose and the pressure washer. To use the wander hose, attach the hose to the hopper and then start the engine. Note, the wander hose will only work if the following four conditions are met. The transit work switch is in work mode 1, the drive lever is in neutral, the handbrake is set, and the wander hose switch is turned on. Once these conditions are met, the fan will start to run and the vacuum head will lower to block the main suction tube and provide more suction to the wander hose. When finished, turn off the wander switch and move the drive lever into the forward position and back to the neutral position to raise the head. The pressure washer is useful for cleaning soiled areas like park benches or the machine itself. To use the pressure washer, unwind the pressure washer hose fully. Note. The pressure washer will only work if these four conditions are met. The transit work mode switch is in work mode 1 position. The drive lever is in the neutral position. The handbrake is set and the pressure washer switch is turned on. Once these conditions are met, you can clean the area and turn off the pressure washer switch when finished. Now pull the wand trigger to release any pressure in the hose and stow the wand. Performing the daily operational checks, making needed adjustments and following the proper operating procedures outlined in the operator's manual will ensure that your Green Machines Model 636HS sweeper will perform in top condition throughout its useful lifetime. You will find it cleans better, has fewer maintenance issues, and effectively enhances the environment for a long time to come.